गुड इवनिंग टुमारो आप लोग का लॉ का एग्जाम है एट्टी मार्क्स है कोर पेपर है थोड़ा ढंग से करना एक एक नंबर का बीस क्वेश्चन और दो दो नंबर का तीस क्वेश्चन ऑप्शन है नहीं माइनस मार्किंग है सोच के अटेम्प्ट करिए थर्टी मार्क्स का वेटेज दिया है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट को थर्टी मार्क्स तो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट आपके लिए वही हो जाता है कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट आपके लिए दस मार्क उसके बाद आपका नेगोशिएबल है आपके पास बाकी एक्ट्स भी हैं पेपर का पैटर्न देख के ये समझ में आता है कि जो दो ईयर में अभी तक एग्ज़ाम हुए हैं सेमेस्टर में पेपर बीस नंबर का जो पहला है, सेट है वो थोड़ा इजी होता है और जो सेकंड पार्ट है वो थोड़ा कंपेरेटिवली टफ है सी ने क्वेश्चन जो बनाए उसके अंदर सेक्शन का वेटेज कर दिया है पाँच क्वेश्चन करीब सेक्शन से रिलेटेड आए हैं तीन चार क्वेश्चन केस लॉ से रिलेटेड आए हैं केस लॉ का नाम दिया हुआ है उस हिसाब से किस से रिलेटेड ये केस लॉ है या किस पॉइंट का ये केस लॉ है उससे रिलेटेड है और बाकी में फिल अप द ब्लैंक कर दिया है हड़बड़ी में करोगे तो सर जी दिक्कत हो जाएगा पढ़ना टाइम लेना चीज़ को उसके बाद करना ये मत सोचना बहुत ईजी है केक वॉक है याद रखो फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर है जो गलती पहले सेमेस्टर में बच्चों ने की है वो मत करना पहले बच्चों ने क्या सोचा कि ठीक है होते जाएगा होते जाएगा होते जाएगा दे दिन गिव डैट वेटेज टू फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर जो उनको देना चाहिए था आने वाला सेमेस्टर स्टफ होते जाएगा जैसे जैसे आप मूव ऑन करोगे सेमेस्टर्स का लेवल बहुत बढ़ जा रहा है पेपर का स्टैंडर्ड बढ़ जाएगा मार्क्स कम होने लगेंगे कोशिश करो इनमें जितना मार्क्स उठ पाए उतना बेटर है हाँ रहा बात पेपर क्या आना चाहिए नहीं आना चाहिए जिस हिसाब से पेपर में क्वेश्चंस पूछे गए हैं दो टर्म में इन्होंने हर एक पार्ट को ट्रिगर किया है हाँ आपको हर चीज़ का नॉलेज होना चाहिए तो आप नंबर उठा लेंगे इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट 1872 तो किस ईयर में पास हुआ ये भी पूछा गया सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट का क्वेश्चन पार्टनरशिप एक्ट का क्वेश्चन किस ईयर में पास हुआ पूछा है तो आपको ये पता होना चाहिए तो इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट एटीन इट केम इन इफेक्ट फ्रॉम फर्स्ट सेप्टेम्बर एटीन इट अप्लाइज टू द एंटायर इंडिया एक्सेप्ट टू द स्टेट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर अभी भी आपकी ये चीज़ है ये याद रखिएगा एक्सेप्ट टू द स्टेट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का डेफिनेशन सर जी गिवन अंडर सेक्शन टू क्लॉज एच एन एग्रीमेंट एनफोर्सेबल बाई लॉ इज नोन एज कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एग्रीमेंट प्लस एनफोर्सिबिलिटी बाई लॉ डेट इज वॉट सर जी इलीगल समथिंग थ्री थिंग्स कैन नेवर बी एनफोर्स बाई लॉ नंबर वन एनी थिंग विच इज इलीगल एनी थिंग विच इज अपोज टू पब्लिक पॉलिसी एंड नंबर थ्री सोशल अरेंजमेंट्स और एग्रीमेंट्स कैन नेवर बी एनफोर्स बाई लॉ सर जी एग्रीमेंट डेफिनेशन सेक्शन टू क्लॉज ई एवरी प्रोमिस और एवरी सेट ऑफ प्रोमिस फॉर्मिंग कंसिडेशन फॉर ईच अदर इज नोन एज एग्रीमेंट सर जी फॉर एन एग्रीमेंट टू टेक प्लेस देर मस्ट बी टू डिस्टिंग पार्टीज वन इज नोन एज द ऑफर एंड द अदर इज नोन एज द ऑफरी द पर्सन हु मेक्स द प्रपोजल इज नोन एज द ऑफर एंड द पर्सन टू हूम द प्रपोजल इज बिंग मेड इज नोन एज द ऑफरी सर जी एग्रीमेंट के लिए दो आदमी लोग एक ही तरीके से सोचना जरूरी है अगर हम दोनों अलग तरीके से सोचेंगे तो कभी एग्रीमेंट नहीं हो सकता तो एक तरीके से सोचने को बोलते हैं कंसेंसस एड आइडम तो कंसेंसस एड आइडम व्हेन टू पर्सन थिंक अबाउट द सेम थिंग इन द सेम मैनर एट द सेम टाइम इट इज़ नोन एज कंसेंसस एड आइडम गिवन अंडर सेक्शन थर्टीन नाउ कमिंग टू द पार्ट ऑफ ऑफर ऑफर द डेफिनेशन इज गिवन अंडर सेक्शन टू क्लॉज ए ऑफर सर जी When one person signifies his willingness to another to do or abstain from doing anything with a view to obtaining the assent of that other to such an act or abstinence, he is said to make a proposal or offer whatever. Offer may be expressed or implied, bol ke bhi, likh ke bhi. But where, what are the various types of offer? Sir ji, general offer which is made to the world at large, it is open to the public. Anyone can accept it. The famous case law is Carlyle versus Carbolic Smoke Ball Company. Ye dhan rakhna. Iske baad, sir ji. जनरल गैस स्पेशल और स्पेसिफिक ऑफर विच इज़ मेड टू अ पर्टिकुलर पर्सन और अ ग्रुप ऑफ पर्सन और अ कंपनी डेट कैन बी एक्सेप्टेड ओनली बाई डैट पर्टिकुलर पर्सन नंबर थ्री काउंटर ऑफर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पूछ चुका पहले भी सर जी एन ऑफर अगेंस्ट एन ऑफर द अर्लियर ऑफर लैप्स एंड न्यू ऑफर कम्स इन टू एक्सिस्टेंस द ऑफर बिकम्स द ऑफरी एंड द ऑफरी बिकम्स द ऑफर बारगेनिंग बेसिकली क्रॉस ऑफर वन टू परसन एक्सचेंज आइडेंटिकल ऑफर इन इग्नोरेंस ऑफ ईच अदर ऑफर वी से क्रॉस ऑफर हैज टेक इन प्लेस इट विल नेवर अमाउंट टू एक्सेप्टेंस सम वन हैज टू एक्सेप्ट इट देन ओनली इट विल बी एन एक्सेप्टेंस नेक्स्ट सर जी स्टैंडिंग ओपन और कंटिन्यूंग ऑफर विच इज ओपन इन द मार्केट फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर फिक्स पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड इट कैन बी एक्सेप्टेड विद इन दैट पीरियड एनी नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स 
like basically i promise to deliver you raw materials for the coming 5 months in that case it becomes a standing open or continuing offer what are the various rules relating to offer usse kuch important hai the terms of the offer must be certain definite and should not be vague an offer must be made with a view to obtain the consent of the offeree an offer must be distinguished from invitation to offer an offer may be conditional an offer may be expressed or implied mere statement of price will not amount to offer and should not contain a term or condition the non compliance of which would amount to acceptance an offer an offer must tend to create legal relation it must be capable of creating a legal relation ye dhyan rakhna so these are the various it must be communicated so there are various rules thode bahut tumko pata hone chahiye तो अगर थोड़ा बहुत ध्यान रहेगा तो तुम कर लोगे एक्सेप्टेंस सेक्शन टू क्लॉज बी व्हेन द पर्सन टू होम द प्रपोजल इज बीइंग मेड सिग्निफाइज इज एसेंट देयर टू द प्रपोजल इज सेट टू बी एक्सेप्टेड अ प्रपोजल व्हेन एक्सेप्टेड बिकम्स अ प्रॉमिस सर जी देर आर नो टाइप्स ऑफ एक्सेप्टेंस ओनली देर आर सर्टन रूल्स एक्सेप्टेंस मस्ट बी अनकॉलीफाइड अनकंडीशनल एंड एब्सोलूट सर नेक्स्ट एक्सेप्टेंस must be within the time specified and if no time is specified within a reasonable period of time acceptance must be communicated mere said metal mental satisfaction will never amount to acceptance bhagwan das bol ke case law uske upar thoda dhyan rakhna next iske baad sir acceptance must be in the mode prescribed sir ji acceptance by conduct sometimes we need to perform it then only it becomes acceptance so these are the things you need to remember next sir लैप्स ऑफ एन ऑफर एन ऑफर कैन लैप्स खत्म कैसे होता है डेथ ऑफ द ऑफर डेथ ऑफ द ऑफरी इंसैनिटी ऑफ द ऑफर इंसैनिटी ऑफ द ऑफरी सुपर विनिंग इम्पॉसिबिलिटी एक्सप्रेस रिवोकेशन हमने हटा ही लिया लैप्स ऑफ टाइम बाई काउंटर ऑफर दीज आर द वेरियस मोड्स ऑफर इज कम्प्लीटेड वैन इट कम्स टू द नॉलेज ऑफ द ऑफरी कम्युनिकेशन ऑफ ऑफर एक्सेप्टेंस इज कम्प्लीटेड वैन इट कम्स टू द नॉलेज ऑफ द ऑफर revocation of offer can be done by the offerer before acceptance by the offeree revocation of acceptance can be done by the offeree before the knowledge of accept before the acceptance part comes to the knowledge of the offeree that is what so these are the things which you need to take care of that's it now coming to the next unit there is consideration very important consideration section 2 clause d when the person to whom the offer is being basically consideration is doing or not doing something so when at the desire of the promise or the promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing does or abstain from doing promises or promise to do uh, not to do something then that thing then that act abstinence or promise is treated as the consideration for the promise that is what latin mein ko sir ji kya bolate hain quid pro quo something in return consideration may be past present future bahut puchta hai ye three types past present or future past consideration is valid only in india consideration must be at the desire of the promisor but me it may move from promise to any other person consideration must be real but it may be adequate or inadequate it may be executed or executory consideration can't be something which is obligatory your obligation can never be treated as a consideration for the promise sir consideration मस्ट बी इन रियल टर्म्स डेट मीन्स मनी मनी में होना चाहिए दुआ देने से नहीं होगा काम इसके बाद देर कैन बी ए स्ट्रेंजर देर कैन नेवर बी ए स्ट्रेंजर टू अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ये वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट है देर कैन नेवर बी ए स्ट्रेंजर टू अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बट देर कैन बी ए स्ट्रेंजर टू द कंसिडरेशन ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इफ यू बिकम्स अ बेनिफिशियरी ही कैन प्रिविटी ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सर जी अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज बेसिकली अ प्राइवेट एग्रीमेंट बिटवीन टू पार्टीज अ स्ट्रेंजर कैन नेवर इंटरफेयर बिटवीन द टू पार्टीज That is what. Then no consideration, no contract. Yes, true है but there are certain exceptions given under section 25. Exceptions एक्सेप्शंस नाम याद रखना है नेचुरल लव एफेक्शन सक्सेशन एंड इनहेरिटेंस पेमेंट ऑफ टाइम बार डेप कम्प्लीटेड गिफ्ट क्रिएशन ऑफ एजेंसीज कंपेंसेशन फॉर पास्ट वॉलेंट्री सर्विसेज देन ग्रेचुएचियस बेलमेंट चैरिटी दीज आर बेसिकली द एक्सेप्शंस रिलेटिंग टू नो कंसिडरेशन नो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट रूल तो इतना ध्यान रखने से तुम्हारा कंसिडरेशन हो जाता है देन कम सर जी आपका कॉम्पिटेंसी ऑफ द पार्टीज टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट थ्री पार्टीज आर इनकम्पिटेंट टू एंटर इन टू द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दे आर इन एलिजिबल नंबर वन माइनर 
नंबर टू पर्सन ऑफ अनसाउंड माइंड एंड नंबर थ्री पर्सन डिसक्वालिफाइड बाई लॉ वैन वी गो फॉर द माइनर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट माइनर इज वॉइड एब इनिशियो द मीनिंग ऑफ एब इनिशियो फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग सर जी रेटिफिकेशन ऑन अटेनिंग मेजोरिटी नॉट अलाउड अ माइनर कैन नेवर बी अ पार्टनर इन अ पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म बट ही कैन बी अ बेनिफिशियरी he can claim his share of profit but he is not liable for any kind of losses he can sue for his share of profit but he is not liable for any losses a minor can always plead minority he can always say i am bachcha humko chhod do a minor's estate is liable for necessary supplied to the minor very important then comes the a minor can be an agent but he can never be a principal because he is not liable a guardian can enter into a contract on behalf of minor provided it is for benefit of the child then it is allowed a minor cannot be insolvent because he is not liable for anything sir next a minor can be a beneficiary and these are the basic points you need to remember रेटिफिकेशन वन नीड टू एंटर इन टू फ्रेश कॉन्ट्रैक्ट आफ्टर ये टेंस मेजोरिटी इतना देख लो हो जाएगा तुम्हारा काम देन इसके बाद सर कैन ए माइनर बाइंड द पेरेंट्स यस इफ ही हैज गॉट द ऑथरिटी इफ द पेरेंट्स हैव गिवन हिम द ऑथरिटी देन ओनली देख ही कैन बाइंड हिम अदर देन नॉट अ माइनर इज लाइबल फॉर क्रिमिनल एक्टिविटीज एंड टॉट्स टॉट्स मीन सिविल रॉन्ग खत्म अब इसके बाद सर आता है इसके अंदर में सर पर्सन ऑफ अनसाउंड माइंड जिनका इंसेन है इंसेनिटी है तो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज वर्ड वो दे कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द टर्म्स ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इफ फॉर द टाइम बिंग दे आर ऑफ अनसाउंड माइंड देन एट दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइम ऑल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स आर वर्ड व्हेन दे आर ऑफ मेंटली फिट इट इज सर जी मेंटली फिट देन इट इज अ वैलिड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एट दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइम इट बिकम्स अ वैलिड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट पर्सन डिसक्वालिफाइड बाई लॉ लॉ हैज डिवार्ड सर्टन पीपल फ्रॉम एंटरिंग इन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यू शुड रिमेंबर द नेम्स insolvent people partly they can enter for services but they can't enter for purchase of goods number 2 sir the convicts criminals corporations foreign souvenirs or ambassadors they can never enter into a contract they are not allowed to do so now moving into the next part we must have knowledge about the void contract voidable contract and illegal contract void contract section 2 clause j pucha hua hai void contract a contract becomes void when it ceases to be enforceable by law then it becomes a void contract it can be void from the beginning it can become a void subsequently the collateral agreements may be valid but the main contract becomes void it may be due to supervening possibility section 50 supervening possibility that means an act of god or something which is not in our control operation of law you become insolvent contract is void now the activity becomes illegal the contract becomes void now india is at war with any country and any contract with that particular country becomes void from the date of the declaration of war subsequent impossibility then sir voidable contract section 2 i i when a contract is enforceable at the option of one or more parties but not at the option of other or others it is known as voidable contracts voidable contract definition is this when a person can uh, my definition when a contract is enforceable at the option of the aggrieved party but not at the option of other or others it is known as voidable contract khatam sir it only happens when there is absence of free consent and free consent is absent in sir ji coercion section 15 undue influence section 16 fraud section 17 misrepresentation section 18 and mistake section 20 unilateral mistake सर जी सेक्शन 22 टू डेट इज़ वॉट ये अपने को ध्यान रखने का सर जी इलीगल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स विच आर फोरबिडन बाई लॉ इट इज़ पनिशेबल अंडर द इंडियन पैनल कोड ऑल कोलेट्रल एग्रीमेंट्स आर वॉइड इन केस ऑफ इलीगल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स दैट इज़ वॉट अन एनफोर्सेबल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सर जी विच सफर्स फ्रॉम सम सर्टन टेक्निकल डिफेक्ट दैट इज एबसेंस ऑफ राइटिंग इट इज़ नॉन एज अन एनफोर्सेबल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वी कान प्रूव इट देन देर आर सर्टन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स विच आर कॉल्ड एक्सप्रेस implied tacit and quasi contract quasi contract is important it is based on the principle of equity justice and good conscience ye aa chuka hai then there is performance executed contract and executory contract executed contract when both the parties have performed their part it is known as executed contract executory contract when one party has performed the other has not or both the parties have not performed 
It means there are two types, unilateral and bilateral. Unilateral contract, when one party has performed the contract and one party's part is outstanding, it is unilateral. Bilateral, when both the party's part is outstanding, it is known as bilateral contract. Khatam. Then, sir, free consent. Free consent, the two parties who are entering into the contract, they must enter into the contract at their own free will. There should not be any kind of external force on them. It becomes a free consent case. Now, free consent is absent in coercion, threatening or detaining any person to enter into a contract. When we physically force anyone to enter into the contract, it becomes voidable at the option of the aggrieved party on whom the physical force has been exercised. It is known as void, uh, free con uh, co coercion. Threat to commit suicide amounts to coercion. That is what. Coercion can be exercised by any person who can be an outsider also. He, he can be a stranger. It's not necessary that the parties to the contract should exercise coercion. Undue influence, when the two parties who are entering into the contract, they have got different bargaining power. One has got a higher bargaining power and he takes undue advantage of that particular position to get an extra benefit out of the contract. It becomes voidable at the option of the person on whom the undue influence has been exercised. Now, and for undue influence, there must there must be some kind of an emotional relationship, a fiduciary relationship, we say, a relationship of trust and confidence. There must there can be a real and apparent authority on that particular person, so that you can influence him, you can manipulate him. In that case, it is possible. Now, there are various examples of undue influence. Basically, landlord, tenant, teachers, students, patient, and doctors. Then you have solicitor and client, teachers, parents, children, husband, wife, employer, employee, master, servant. There are many cases in which one has got a higher bargaining power and other has got a lower bargaining power. The person who is who is required to prove that thing that he has exercised undue influence, burden of proof will be on the person who has got higher bargaining power. He need to establish that he has not exercised any undue influence. That's it. Fraud section 17. Undue was 16. It's section 17. There is an intention to deceive the other party. A promise made without the intention of performing it. Any act fitted to deceive. Any act declared by the court as fraud. These are the things which you need to know. So these are what fraud is all about. Fraud Silence can amount to fraud, yes, if there was a necessity to speak, otherwise there is no need to say that silence can amount to fraud. There are certain contracts like marriage contracts, family settlement arrangements, insurance contracts, then share broker contracts, share contracts, then we have got fiduciary relationship contracts. In all these cases, there is a necessity to speak. You must speak, otherwise there can be a fraud. And in case of fraud, a person is liable for damages. Next, sir, fraud is very difficult to catch. It is very much planned, pre-planned basically. Then misrepresentation section 18, I said something believing it to be true but was actually false. When something is being said believing that it is true but is actually false, so it is known as misrepresentation. Since there is no intention, so no damages can be claimed. That is what. And it is very easy to catch. Mistakes, when the parties are not aware of the of something it is known as mistake there can be a case of unilateral mistake and there can be a case of bilateral mistake when one party is not is at mistake then the contract is voidable at the option of the party who is at mistake it is voidable when both the parties are at mistake that is bilateral the contract is void ignorance is juris non excuse it remember this ignorance of law can never be excused so next iske baad, sir mistake of indian law is not allowed if a contract is made with mistake of indian law it is a valid contract remember that mistake of foreign law is treated as mistake of fact then agreements supposed to public policy are expressly declared void there can be various instances like trading with enemy champerty and maintenance sir stifling prosecution agreement in restraint of trade agreement in restraint of marriage agreement in restraint of legal proceedings interference with the course of justice sale of public offices, interest against obligation, sir, interest against obligation, then you have creation of monopolies, then wagering agreement, the term wager means bet, it is not allowed, one wins and the other loses, money flows, there, there is this thing, 
then marriage brokerage contracts these are basically the things which are basically declared as void interest against obligations and all then speculative transactions are valid transactions because law has specifically declared certain spe speculative transactions like trading at the stock exchanges they are allowed so these are basically allowed also lottery is not allowed in india it is void then performance of contract who can perform the contract the promisor himself the joint promisor third party agent and the legal heir or the representative they can perform the contract succession and assignment the difference you must know uh, in case of succession the benefits as well as the expenses all are being succeeded in case of assignment sir only the benefit is being assigned to the other party not the expenses sir then comes joint promisor there are various cases in relation to joint promisor all will be jointly and severely liable if one becomes insolvent or died then his share the deficiency will be borne by the remaining joint promisor and no one can discharge each other without the permission of the original creditor remember that thing then sir novation alteration res rescission and remission these are the four things which you need to remember how a contract can be discharged basically a cancelled the novation a new contract emerges and a old contract gets cancelled alteration the terms and conditions are being ch changed but the old contract continues rescission the contract is altogether being cancelled remission a part or a part is being waived off or fully it is waived off that is what remission is all about restoration when a voidable contract becomes void the benefits received by either parties must be restored back the parties must come back to their original position it is known as restoration or restitution then you have got supervening impossibility supervening impossibility section 56 i have already dealt with it so you must be knowing discharge of a contract how a contract is discharged a contract is discharged sir ji by performance first of all number two by mutual agreement both have decided by breach of contract by supervening impossibility by operation of law insolvency by remission by not giving the adequate opportunity to perform the contract by merger of rights also the various cases by breach of contract these are the ways in which a contract can be discharged breach of contract non performance of a contract by a party is known as breach breach can be of two types actual breach and anticipatory breach actual breach when it is not performed the date of the performance on the date of performance of contract it is it is known as actual breach you can their own claim or sue for damages and there are various rights anticipatory breach when on the basis of the conduct of a party it is assumed and presumed that he is going to breach the contract in that case it becomes voidable at the option of the aggrieved party he can either wait or he can rescind the contract and sue for damages Achha, what are the various options available in case a contract in, is breached by a, a party the aggrieved party can sue for damages he can go for injunction he can claim uh, sue for damages injunction he can sue for specific performance he can sue for quantum merit he can rescind the contract rescind he can cancel the contract injunction restraining a person from committing a negative act that is stay order suit for a specific performance compelling him to perform the contract if damages in money are not adequate or it causes a hardship on the aggrieved party and then quantum merit as much as earned if the contract is divisible then the amount of work done you can claim compensation for that particular part damages there can be of two types liquidated and non-liquidated or unliquidated damages liquidated when the damages are pre-fixed in the contract it is known as liquidated damages pre-decided unliquidated there is no fixation beforehand when the contract is being breached then only the damages are being calculated or decided the various types of damages are ordinary that is the actual nominal no damage actually but for a moral check special certain special circumstances clauses are there then it is a special vindictive or exemplary due to loss of reputation then you've got remote damages which occur at a very place in which you cannot recover then you have got damages for deterioration caused by delay that is also a damage 
तो नॉमिनल ऑर्डिनरी एक्चुअल हाँ दीज आर द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ डैमेजेस देन वी हैव गॉट कंटिजेंट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट वेन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट is on the happening or non happening of a collateral event not the main event it becomes a contingent contract if it is on the happening of a future uncertain collateral event <coughs> it is valid when that event happens and it is void when that event doesn't happen if it is on the non happening of a future uncertain collateral event it is valid when that event does not happen and it is void when it happens yaad rakhna contingent contract is a valid contract it is not a game of chance like the wagering contract here the consideration flows only from one side then you got quasi contract which is based on the principle of equity justice and good conscience it is it is not actually a contract but it is treated like a contract that is what quasi contract is all about quasi contracts are like contract <coughs> <coughs> they are not actually contracts remember that thing no one can enrich themselves at the expense of other there are various types of quasi contract claim for necessary supply to the miner money or thing delivered under mistake finder of lost goods these are the various cases where quasi contract is applicable so these are the things if you remember in law bailment bailment delivery of goods to another person for a particular purpose or time and when that purpose or time is over the goods are either destroyed or written back to the original person two parties bailer and bailee the person who delivers the goods is known as bailer and the other person to whom the goods is being delivered is known as the bailee that is what these are the things which you need to remember इतना करने से मेरे हिसाब से कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट हो जाएगा इतना ध्यान रख लेना बाकी वीडियोस देखते हैं टाइम मिलेगा तो जरूर अपलोड करेंगे टिल देन ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू सर